And so I just kept going and I just failed, failed a lot, but I'm really quick to take action. Mm -hmm. That's probably one of my superpowers. I'm a massive implementer. Um, and I do it before it's perfect so that I, like I learn a lot along the way. People are always waiting to make things be perfect. And for me, it's like, I, I know that even if I wait and it's perfect, it's still not going to be perfect. So I'd rather launch more quickly and make, you know, and then tweak and optimize as I go. And it's been just really, really good for me. Hi everybody, this is Carolina Millan and welcome to a new episode of Beyond the Hustle. And I'm here today with a very, very special guest. She is an entrepreneurial and real estate coach. She teaches people how to crush it with digital marketing. Miss, Miss or Mrs? <laughs> Mrs. Yeah, Mrs. Mayshore. Krista Mrs. Mayshore. <laughs> Krista Mayshore. How are you, Krista? Oh, thanks for having me on, Caroline. It was, it was, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm excited to be here. So, and I just have to say to you that I love your energy. And if those of you that are watching, you have to know, I know Carolina and she is the real deal. Like very, very caring, heart centric, cares about people. She's, she's awesome. So I'm really honored to be here. Thank you. And I'm honored to have you here as well. So let's let's get right into it so for the for the few people listening or watching who may not know you yet can you share your let's say your origin story how you got started in what, what you're doing today maybe what was the turning point that took you where you are today and then we're going to talk about those amazing results you have <laughs> so one thing i will say is a lot of people don't know about me is that um i haven't lived at home since i was 13. There was some abuse going on from my mother, who is his amazing. We're very close now. She was very instrumental in my healing. Um, but I ended up running away from home and getting sent to juvenile hall and then to a group home for troubled girls and then to a foster home my remaining time until I turned 18. And then when I turned 18, they said, hey, you got to go. And so I ended up um, just having to try to figure it out. And so I ended up like let, let the, the amount of foster kids that actually go to college, it's less than 1%. And a lot of them end up on drugs, pregnant, homeless, because there's, you know, there, and up until recently, there wasn't a lot of help for foster kids. When they turned 18, they just got thrown out into the street, basically. Right. So all the success I've had has been just from me really working on my mindset, because anytime that you have physical abuse from a parent, there's a lot of limiting beliefs, like you're not good enough and you, you, you suffer with self-worth and value and feeling, you know, so I've, I've really done a lot of work on, on that. You know, I was telling you about my book, Stop, Snap, and Switch, Train Your Brain to Unleash Your Limitless Life. And like, I, yes, yes, I, I live by it. You're so cute. I live by, by the mindset and, um, and I, and I've had to work really hard at it, you know, counseling and therapy and hypnosis, all of it, quite frankly, because when you have that abuse, it, it really kind of runs deep. And so I always tell everybody, if I could do this, you could do it. Cause I'm just the kid that hasn't lived at home since I was 13 and what the bed from, you know, till I was like 10 or 11. And, you know, that I, I, I had a, couldn't read until I was in fifth grade because of the abuse. It's like, that's me. So if I can do it, you can do it, right? Amazing. Yeah. And then yeah. how did you go from there to, to becoming, you know, the real estate mogul that you are and then going from there to coaching people? So my husband, my daughter Kaylee got sick when she was little. She um, contracted spinal meningitis and then she had kidney failure and she almost died a couple of times. Uh, we were in the hospital at Children's Hospital for a few weeks, and they basically told me, hey, prepare yourself. Um, she's probably not going to make it. And luckily, she's amazing. But they did tell me that she probably had a very high chance of being um, blind, disabled, you know, um, all, all these things. So I left my teaching job. I was a teacher to go and uh, be a stay-at-home mom so I could help her with her milestones. And really shortly thereafter, my husband at the time had an affair and Kind of, we had just bought a new house and left me and the girls. And so I got into real estate to sort of play real estate. And I ended up like, because of my history, I had to like make it work, right? Because, you know, all of a sudden, brand new home, two little girls under the age of four, uh, drain make accounts and like, what the heck am I going to do? And so I ended up getting into real estate and selling 69 homes my first year. Mm -hmm. And then I averaged well over 100 homes a year every year after that and did that for about 17 years. Um, and I, then I was like, but I missed coaching and teaching. And I was like an expert realtor, right? I did things very differently. Like everyone else was doing open houses and door knocking and cold calling. And I was building funnels and doing video and digital marketing. And that's how I, that's how I dominated because I was just so different than everybody else. 
So finally I got, was just tired of being a real estate, real estate agent. And it was to the point where I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to kill myself. You know, I sold 154 homes the year, Wow. the year I, I left real estate to be a coach. And I was just so exhausted and tired. And the fear of continuing that way and being on the phone all the time and not really being as present as I wanted to be outweighed the, the fear of changing careers. So I just changed careers and coached realtors and brought that business. We we've done, you know, about over $51 million online in six years. Um, and about a year ago, we just launched a new business where we teach entrepreneurs, coaches, and consultants, like how to create high ticket offers and how to create coaching programs and sell from stage and all that. So it's been, it's been super fun. <laughs> wow. So what's your advice, you know, for somebody who is just starting out, they don't have any sales yet, because this is something that I hear a lot from my students, like, okay, but I don't have any testimonials yet. I don't have any sales yet. I don't have this. I don't have that. So what's your advice for somebody to gain confidence when they're just brand new? That's a really good, uh, that's a good question. So how I did it is because I really am a firm believer personally, and I'm not saying for everyone to do this, though. so I'm going to give you multiple ways of building confidence, right? Because because I'm not always confident. I mean, I'm pretty confident, <laughs> but not all the time, right? Of course. Um, I was even telling you that recently I've had a couple of rough months, right? And, I, and I've kind of lost my confidence. And I've, I've had to like really work on my mindset, work on what I'm saying to myself, like not talk negative, right? Like stop, snap and switch the heck out of my own thoughts lately. Um, and it's like self-sabotaging, right? So one of the ways is you can help somebody for free. So when I first started coaching realtors, I coached around 40 people, I think it was ish for mm. free, got them results. Then I got the testimonials and I got them success and I knew it works. Then I had more confidence. Okay. That's one thing. Also, when you know, you've got a good product or service, it's really easy to be confident about it. Right? So make sure you have a really great product and remind yourself that your job is not to convince people, but your job is to help ethically persuade them to say yes to themselves mm. because they cannot do it on their own. So I know that. I know I'm one of the most motivated people that you're ever going to meet. And I have not mm. taken action before. And I know the cost of an action. And I'm like super motivated. In fact, Dean Graziasi told me, you're, and Russell Brunson have both said to me, you are probably one of the quickest people to take action that I've ever met. Like you are an insane implementer, right? But even with that, I'm not always like that. So I have to train myself, yes. right? But the more, and, and it's like confidence is something that you have to, you can learn, right? And Tony Robbins talks about the success cycle, right? And I, I added one part of the success cycle. I, I added the mastermind team. Yeah. And he talks about like, we, we're so resourceful as humans, okay? Now follow along with me because I'm going to get to her answer in a second. We are so resourceful. We have we have so much potential as humans. We have so unlimited potential. We put people on the moon. We, I mean, you can you go in an airplane and you fly. Like that is crazy. You can talk to somebody and see their face on the other side of a phone. We built those phones as humans, right? And as long as you take effective, massive action, not just action, but effective, mass, massive action, you should get the results. And once you start getting momentum. Then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, this feels good. I'm getting this, right? But what do you do when you don't have momentum? Well, he says you visualize results in advance in your mind. Because the more you can visualize results in advance, you even said yourself, you saw yourself speaking on stage at Tony Robbins, yeah. right? And and you, so you visualize re re results in your mind because when you visualize, your brain literally does not know the difference between what you think and what, you, what you're what you're doing. There's all yeah. these research studies on that, right? Mm -hmm. Like thinking something, visualizing something produces the same neurons in the brain. At that as if you're actually taking the action. Okay. Yeah. So the more you can visualize it, then your, your brain starts to believe it. The more you believe, the more action you're going to take. If you don't believe it's going to work, you're not going to take effective action. So you've got to number one, build the belief by visualizing results in advance in your mind. Mm. Right. And, and, th and then when you do that, you're going to the, build the belief. So you take more action, effective action, right? Get results. Then you start getting momentum and then man, things, things turn around. So it's something you just have to practice. And if you're, you know, we all have imposter syndrome. There's times where I have imposter syndrome because we feel like, and I never knew what that was just so you all know until I got into coaching, but it's like <laughs> imposter syndrome is when you feel like, oh my gosh, who am I to be doing this? Yeah. Who are they to listen to me? And I felt like that too. And I had to remind myself, Krista, you were in the top 1% of realtors nationwide, you know, 17 years in a row ish, big right? Deal. Like it's a big deal. Like you, you are a marketing genius, you know? And now I, when I launched this new business, same thing, I'm like, well, who's going to listen to me? Who am I? I'm like, Krista, you built the coaching business from ground up 
And, you know, you, you did fifth, like I'm, ClickFunnels told me I'm the number one world's best funnel builder in real estate, right? But now not many people have had the results that we have, like very small. Yeah. And we are experts at it. So I told myself, you are an expert. You can do this. I just have to talk to myself well. And so sometimes you just got to kind of fake it till you make it. Like there was this book, I can't remember the name of it. I hate when I can't remember the name, but she talks about like when she puts on a red lipstick, she takes the identity and the character of this very successful person. And as soon as that, like that lipstick tells her brain and tells her you are a bad A, like you're awesome and you can do that. And you're confident and you have, your product works and you can do anything. You just have to practice, right? You've got to practice at being that person and, and don't beat yourself up when you fall because you will. Can't be confident every day. Like it's impossible. But you know, the reason I love to stop, snap and switch is because you let those negative thoughts be minutes and not hours or maybe hours, but not days, days. or weeks. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, the more you can get control of it and it's a constant work for me still, like I still have to constantly work on it. Like really I do. And it, people, it's so easy to look at somebody else on the outside and, and know, I mean, you know, there's months where I have 600, $700,000 of overhead. Right. I mean, it's pretty dang scary when you have a couple of negative months. Right. Oh, so yeah. It was great when we were doing $1.4 million months. We had a $4 million month but two years ago on February, I think it was. Um, that was great, but that didn't, that's not all the time. So when you have a, a regular month and you're like, oh my God, I just, I spent more than I made this month, right? Like you start to freak out. You got to train yourself and to remind yourself that yeah. it's going to be fine. Keep going. This is going to work, you know, and things are hard. Like it does, it's not as easy as everybody thinks. It's all bull crap online when people are like, there's somebody else that sells something where, uh, kind of similar to me. And she's like, this is easy. Do you want to just hit the easy button and learn how? And I'm like, you are so full of crap. Like there is not nothing easy. easy about it. <laughs> it, it. You know, you don't do this kind of business and think it'd be, that it's easy. It takes work and grind. But I always say hard now or hard forever. Yes. Resources and expense and time now or time forever. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to be hard for a while or it's going to be hard every freaking day. Mm -hmm. So choose your poison, you know? Uh, what's been one obstacle that you have faced and, you know, when probably when you were scaling your business, right? What was one of the biggest obstacles that you had faced and how did you overcome that obstacle and what did you learn from it? It took me longer than I thought to be profitable. Mm -hmm. That was one thing. And so I had to actually sell one of my houses. My daughter moved back in with me. I had to, you know, I, and when I first started, I had, the obstacle was I still had to kind of do real estate while I was coaching, but I was able to use the money from it to sort of help do the coaching, which was lucky for me. I know not a lot of people had that option, but, um, but it was really hard to be profitable at first. I mean, it was like, gosh, no one tells you out that it costs 1,100,000 to make your first million, right? Like it, it just does. But what happened was like, once I hit my first million, you know, it took us 11 months, but again, not then all of a sudden, I think it was just a couple months later, I like hit another one and then another one. And we got like four to come a couple words within a matter of like, like six, six months or like eight, six, eight months after our first one. I'm, I know I'm saying the numbers wrong. I hate exaggerating, but it happened quickly after that. Right. Another thing that happened that I'm, I think that I, uh, I'm not, I like, even though I, I don't love looking at numbers and I think it's really important to look at the numbers and to kind of, and I have somebody I trust and I, and I respect and I love her, but I still need to know because, but it stresses me out sometimes, you know, but I need to be more responsible with my business with, with <laughs> that. So that, that's something that I regretted. Um, and another thing is not doing it soon enough because I had wanted to leave about two years prior to when I did. And had I had done that at the time, I would probably be well, way more successful than I am even now because what I teach, no one really teaches, right? Like they're not teaching social media and video and Facebook ads and funnels in, in the real estate industry. Same, so if huh? I would have done that one sooner, I would have probably launched sooner. But I was, I am glad though that I waited a little bit longer to launch my entrepreneurial one because- I made sure that my other business was kind of solid before I made the plunge. And um, that was something I didn't do when I, when I moved from my real estate business into my coaching, when I just like left and it like my real estate business was like the wicked, wicked stepchild. And so that business really kind of plummeted after I left, you know, cause I didn't have the system set up yet. So. Yeah. But you know, it's all about timing, you know, it wasn't, yeah. that's what I tell myself too. when I'm like, Oh, if only I had done this, or if only I'd done this sooner, well, it's all about timing. Timing is everything. And sometimes, you know, 
things happen happen when when they have to happen and you've yeah. done amazing um so let's talk a little bit about ai um yeah. how are you using are you using it at all how are you using it how is it helping your business and of course your clients i'm obsessed with ai right now like <laughs> absolutely obsessed i just paid for two coaching programs i just invested over right around ten thousand dollars just this past like two weeks in in uh ai coaching here's what i'll tell you about ai and this is and don't let it overwhelm you because it can be overwhelming, but you don't need to use everything. You just need to use a few things that relate to your business and get very good at them, right? And it's so much more than chat GPT. Yes. The integrations and the automations that it can do for your business is unbelievable. But start with just like, think about what's one thing that you do all the time and then do some research. How can AI help me do that more efficiently, more effectively, more profitably, mm. and more productively, right? And and start using one thing. And I, I would say it is... AI is not going to take over people's jobs, but it will take over people's jobs that don't harness it and use it as their friend. It's not to take away your job. It's to help you do what you're, help you focus on more, yeah. you know, higher level thinking activities and to save you time. Mm. So um, I'm using it a lot. I mean, I'm literally, I was up at 3 a.m. this morning from three until, you know, 12 o'clock. I was taking the training courses mm -hmm. and I'm realizing that I have to learn it in order to get my team to, to adopt it. Mm -hmm. And plus I want to know it because I want to figure out how I can get them to be more, more efficient. And you know, they're saying, I don't have enough time to do it. I'm like, you don't have enough time not to. So I've learned that I have to be the one that's doing it. Yeah. But it, it's like, it just does some crazy things. I and mean, you can take a video and you can upload a video into it and you can tell it, take this video and break it down for me. Tell me the three main points, create an email out of it, make it sound of my voice. I mean, and that's just like the chat GPT stuff. It does so much more than that. You can put a video into video IO and it will take the video, chop it up to all the different social media sites. Yeah. It'll put the font on there, the colors. You could have automations through Zapier that say, okay, put it in the spreadsheet. And then once you hit yes, it automatically puts them into the right places for you. Like it is insane what it yes. can do. So I'm curious to know who are some of your, your role models and, and mentors? Like who's somebody that you look up to and who's somebody that, you know, is a mentor to you? Yeah. So I, first of all, love Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. I know he's not alive, but think and go rich. It's, it literally is what helped me. You know, I literally was reading that book and I, I stopped what I was doing and did this thing called teens lifting lives where I coach teens right when I was reading that book, that book helped me like have the courage to leave my successful real estate career. Uh, so I love, I love that Tony Robbins, as you know, I really have a massive high amount of respect for Tony. He, I believe he's just a good human. I know there's all this, these things about him being a womanizer, but I don't believe it to be true. People tell lies about people that are successful. I think is great. Um, you Russell too. Brunson was instrumental in helping me, you know, uh, you know, helping me with, with kind of launch uh, and kind of figure out that, Hey, I'm an expert and I, I can sell my expert advice. <laughs> um, th those are the, those are the main ones, but I mean, I, I'm a book nerd. I love reading and love listening to audios and learning from people. And what are you reading right now? Is there a book you're reading right, right now? Right now I'm reading my book because I told you my <laughs> own mindset was getting bad, but I'm also listening to The Marriage Giver. So have you ever heard of The Go-Giver? There's one called The Marriage Giver, oh, okay. which is which is an excellent, excellent book. I love the book from Chet Holmes, The Ultimate Selling Machine. His his daughter, Amanda, just redid that. That's awesome. Uh, oh yeah, she's great. I love the book from Joey Coleman, Never Lose a Customer Again. That's a book that I've read multiple times. Um, Think and Go Rich. I mean, multiple times on that one as well. So uh, yeah, I'm, I, I like reading. <laughs> mm -hmm. I promise I want to read too much, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I have. I buy more books than, you know, than you what can I read. can read. <laughs> yeah, me too. It happens to a lot of us. <laughs>